All right, so once again, hello everyone and welcome to today's workshop. In today's workshop, um, I don't actually have any slides prepared. So let me share my screen. I'm trying a new format today. So today's topic is updating a blog's design and I've called it a informal live stream. Um, and what this is, is I am going to take my personal blog and update the design. So I'm going to change the theme. I'm going to give it a fresh, fresh look. Um, and you're going to watch me do it. So you're going to see me change themes on the theme, uh, on, the, on the site. Um, and it might go well, it might not go well. We'll see how it goes. Um, and basically I'm just going to be working on the site here and answering any questions you have in the chat. So I'll sort of explain what I'm doing, my thought process. Um, but if you have any questions, you can unmute and ask, or you can drop it in the Zoom chat. And um, hopefully um, it will give everybody an idea of how you can update a blog's design without like um, having to pause the site or like keep the site live, but still update the design. So we'll see how that goes. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand what we're going to be doing today? Laura says, very cool. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and um, these online workshops hosted by the training team, these are a place where we can all learn together. So um, I, I don't know all the answers. So if we have questions, we can help each other answer each other's questions. Um, and hopefully this will be an hour where we, we can all learn together. M says, mad science experiment. Yes, that is exactly what this is. Um, and I will say this is part one. I don't think we'll be able to complete the full redesign today. Um, so I do have a part two scheduled later in March. Um, so the links in the meetup.com um, event, let's see, you can see there's a link to part two here. So do sign up for that as well if you enjoyed today. All right, so the site we are going to be updating um, is my personal site and I will drop the link in the Zoom chat here. That's B Sun's blog. Um, and this is just what I'm using today. We can use any site, it just happens to be my own site. Um, but um, let me open the WordPress admin dashboard for this as well. We've got B Sun's blog. Right, let's log in. Oh, so what's this? WordPress administration email ver okay. verification. Um, so, oh well, this email is correct. You all got to see my email address. <laughs> uh, but anyway, let's see. So, to be honest, this has been a while since I've logged into my site. So I'm just trying to figure out what I'm seeing here. Um, so this here is a advertisement from the Jetpack plugin. So I'm just gonna close that for the moment. Um, and what you see here now is the normal dashboard of the site. Okay, John, before you begin, can you tell us if you have a reason to update your site? That's a very good question. <clears throat> the reason I'm updating my site is because <clears throat> I am currently using the 2022 theme. And when I use this theme, um, WordPress, they were still working on the um, template editor and the custom templates. Um, and so I tried to modify the theme design on my own but I didn't have the full power of full site editing yet. This is over a year ago. Um, and so now we have full site editing, editing is pretty much done. We have a new 2023 theme, um, which uses custom templates and custom template parts. And so I wanted to um, transform my site from the 2022 theme to 2023 theme, set up custom templates for myself and just give it a refresh. Um, it's been, I think a year and a half almost since I used this design. 
Does that, does that answer your question, John? Um, as a general rule, you don't have to update your site design that often. Um, but for my personal blog, um, I just want to give it a fresh start and um, using full site editing seemed like a good idea here. All right, so, so yeah, we're going to change this to the 2023 theme, but while I'm working on the site design, I still want to keep this site up and live. I don't want to sort of break things while I'm working on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my site content into a staging site work on the staging site, and then bring the content back. Um, so the staging site is like a testing environment where you can work on your site design and um, without affecting your real site. Now, depending on your host, your host might provide um, a staging environment. Um, but today, I'm going to use a service called Local by Flywheel. Here we go. So I'll drop the link in the Zoom chat as well. And what this is, is this allows you to easily create WordPress websites within your computer. So you don't need a server anywhere. Your computer becomes a WordPress server and you can build your site there. So what I'm going to do, this is my live site on the live server. I'm going to export the site, put it into a local site on my computer, work on the local site, and then in the next session, put the data back on the live site. Now to do that, to export your site content, um, there are a few ways you can do it, but I like, I like to use um, a plugin called All-in-One WordPress Migration. I think it's what it's called. Here we go, All-in-One WordPress Migration. So, um, Let me get the link for everyone for that as well. Here we go. So this is only one WordPress migration. This is the plugin we're going to be using. Sushma, will this class recording be available? Yes, um, this recording will be available and uploaded to WordPress TV in a couple of days. So um, let's install this plugin. And there are other migration plugins you can use as well. Um, I've just I'm used to this plugin. I've used this plugin a number of times and I like how simple you can export and import the plugin. So only in one WP migration that has been installed. So what we do is we come to the new menu item here and click on export. Sushma says, thanks, no, no problem. All right, export site. Um, so we're going to export to file. And the reason why I'm going to work on my local computer is just because I find it simpler than working on a, a server somewhere. Um, it's just a preference. Um, you can definitely use your staging environment on, on your web host. Um, there's no problem with that at all. And you can do pretty much the same thing as what I'm doing here. Um, but I just, I just like using a local environment and playing around and not worry about things breaking on the internet. Mark Andrews says he can update the event chat on Meetup with the actual link when it is posted. Thank you, Mark. That would be really, really helpful. All right, so my site is ready to be downloaded. So I'll click that. Um, and you can see that's downloading here. And while that's downloading, let me open my local. Let's see, hopefully you can see, oops, oops, oops. Hopefully you can see this on the screen. Um, so what I'm doing here is um, I've already downloaded this software local. It's a free tool. It's a free tool you can use to um, build sites on your own computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new site. You can see all my online workshops. I, all the test sites I use in my online workshops are on local. So you can see all these sites here. Um, but let me make a new site. So I'm going to create a new site. And this is going to be called um, 
March 2023, site redesign. Continue, we can just go with that. WordPress username, that. Um, for the password, just a moment. Um, you can fit any password. This is just for your local install, like local site. So you can set any password, um, but I have a password I frequently use uh, for my own site. So I'll just add that there, add site. Um, and that's basically it. You just give it a name, give it some login details, um, and then local makes a site for you. I'm just giving my permission, uh, computer permission. There we go. All right, so here we are, March 2023 20, site redesign. I'm going to star this, and by starring that, it just put it at the top here. Um, so I can come back to it easily in my next online workshop. Um, so this is this is the local software. It's this isn't WordPress. This is the local by Flywheel software you're seeing right now. And um, I like to turn this setting on one click admin. So usually when you open the WordPress admin screen, you have to enter your login details before you get in. But with local, because this is all on my computer, by turning this on. I can click WP admin and it goes to the dashboard without me having to enter my login details. So that's just a, a setting I like. All right, so what I've just done is I've exported the content here. So that's downloaded on my computer. And I've just created a brand new website called March 2023 Site Redesign. So let's open this in a new tab. This is what the site looks like right now. Very simple. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to import my current site data into this site. So then we can just work on the local site for the rest of this session. So um, to do that, we need to add the all-in-one WordPress migration plugin to this site as well. So I'll search for all-in-one WordPress migration. All right, so we install the same plugin over here. We activate. Okay, so we see the menu item over here. And this time I'll click on import. And so you can drag and drop a backup here to import from. <sighs> Maximum upload file size, 300 megabytes. And uh, this is it's 700 megabytes. Okay, so this is the first hurdle we come to, how to increase maximum upload file size. So um, what we can do is we can edit the HT access file of this site to increase the maximum upload. So this is where it gets a bit technical because um, let's see. So I want to go to the site folder. Does local have a .ht access file? Hmm. Does anybody know, maybe this, this isn't going to work. Index, me, activate, uh, on. WP config, I think you can actually modify this in WP config, here we go. Edit the WP config file. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to increase this maximum upload file size to 750 so we can upload this um, backup file and to do that this is the um, wp 
all in one WP migration plugin help site. And it says how to increase maximum upload file size. One of the ways is to edit the WP config file. So I have just opened, there we go. Um, this is the files inside my computer for this site. And we have the WP config.php file. So we want to edit that. So let me do that. WP config. And we have a few questions in the chat. So let me, let me see what it says. Mark and, oh, let's see. So Laura, the original WordPress dashboard looks different than the new one. Why? I'm guessing you mean this one? This dashboard looks different to this one? Um, and I think that's my host. Let me just close this for the moment. My host, I think my host is wordpress.com. There we go. Yeah, my host is wordpress.com. And so the wordpress.com host has um, sort of colored in the dashboard for me. So that's just a design by my host. Um, over here, what you're seeing right now is the simple, plain WordPress installation colors. And that's why they look a bit different. Yep. Oh, okay. So everybody's been answering. Oh, great. Everybody's having a conversation answering for me. So that looks wonderful. Um, John says, lots of hosts have different looks to their dashboard. Exactly. All right, so coming back to this WP config, um, we want to increase the maximum file size to 750 megabytes. So let me just copy all that. And this is the WP config file. Let's see. Now, I'm not a developer, so I don't like to go into code and edit stuff too often. Um, but I do know if you scroll down in the WP config file, there's a comment here that says, add any custom values between this line and the stop editing line. So stop editing line is here. So right here, we'll paste um, all this from the um, all-in-one WordPress migration. And we want to change the upload max file size. We want to change this to 750 megabytes. Um, and I'm not sure if this is relevant, but I'll change this just in case, the, the memory, memory limit, the 750 megabytes. Um, so I've added some code here. I've changed it to 750. I'm going to save my changes. And hopefully that has increased the maximum upload size on my site. So let's come back here. Let me refresh this page. Three hundred megabytes. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Local. I think you will need to restart the server. Okay, let's try that. So let me stop the site. All right, so let's close that, close that. Um, and then let me restart this site. And let's see if this works. So only one WP migration, import 300 megabytes. Hmm. Let me see if I can upload anyway. So I'm dragging the file I downloaded before here. Nope. Close. Hmm. Let me open this again. Let me just go through and change that as well. 750 for post max size. Save. 
Okay. Let me count, let me close that. Let me let me just stop the site. Let me restart. Only one WP migration import. 300 megabytes. So yes, um, unlimited is the pro version of um, the um, plugin. So that's that. Um, I've been able to do this. I have a feeling it's because I'm doing a local. Let me look it up. So local by flywheel increase upload size let's try that maybe local has an idea local community oh here we go someone else is trying this exactly how do i increase that navigate to the conf php php in the hbs update lines to the value you need oh okay so in the comments here, um, Robert says, are the lines starting with an at mark comments? Um, no, um, the line starting with an, this slash asterisk, these are the comments. Um, I think at the at mark, the at mark um, it means something in programming, but it's not comments, it actually means something. So I've been trying to update the WP config, but let's let's try something else. Let's try this answer I've just found um, on the locals help site to see if this works. So it says um, navigate to conf PHP PHP INI HPS. So let me open my files again. So we want to go to conf PHP. PHP INI HPA. So that's this file. So we will open this file like that. And then let's see. Post max size, upload max file. Also, I have the memory limit to 512. So maxes, max, max input time, max input bars, memory limit. Okay, so I think this is it. So um, so let me just go way up a post max size a thousand max file uploads. Is that, is that what he, is that what this person said? Post max size upload max file size. Upload max file size. Hmm, we don't actually see. Upload max file size. Let me let me just quickly look that up. Upload. Oh, here we go. Upload max file size, three hundred. So let me change this to um, one thousand twenty-four. All right. So I think I hopefully this is it. So let me save the changes. The change. Um, John says, go big or go home. Exactly. And because this is my co own computer, I know I'm not going to like break something drastic. Well, hopefully not. So I've updated that. Um, let's see. Let, let me just close this site once more. Let me stop the site. And let me restart the site. <clears throat> let's go to here, import and Yay! All right. So maximum upload file size is now a thousand megabytes, which means I should be able to drag that backup file. All right. The import process will overwrite your website, including the database, media, plugins, and themes. Please ensure that you have a backup of your data before proceeding to the next step. Um, so if you're doing this on your server, then you want to make sure you have a backup of your files there. This is just a brand new blank site on my computer, so I don't have a backup, but that's okay. Let's proceed. And hopefully this works. 
Okay. Um, so save permalink structure. All right, so now the login details here, because I've imported my external site here, the login details are the same as my external site. So not my local login details, but my external personal blog login details. So let me just um, open my password manager. Um, let's see. Do that. Do that. Log in. All right. All right. So you can see um, this is on the server. So on the server, it says bsuns.blog slash WP admin. Um, and we know this one is my local site because the domain says March 2023 site redesign.local. So that's how we can tell this is a local site and the other one's the server site. Um, the dashboard color is also different. So that also helps us identify the two sites. But now when we open this site, we should see exactly the same thing as my site on the server. All right, so some things are broken here, um, probably because of a plugin setting. So let me, let me have a look at that. So permalinks. But so far, I think the import has gone smoothly. So let's see, let me go to dashboard. Um, So this says you are currently running a development version of Jetpack currently in offline mode um, because your site URL is a known local development environment. So what it is, is when you look at my site, some of these things are code, like here, that this is supposed to be my um, sign up form into your email address below. So that's, that's a subscription form um, here. And that's turned into code because Jetpack, the plugin Jetpack has turned off. It knows it's a local site, and so it's not doing everything it should. But um, we should be able to just leave that. And when I take the site back to the online version, it should work okay. All right, so first step done. I've been able to migrate my site from the server to my local um, environment, and now we can actually work on the site design. Any questions so far? So let's see, that, that page really helped. That was really good. Um, we don't need that one anymore. But I might just keep it there so we can differentiate between the sites on the left and the local sites on the right. M, can't you turn the features Jetpack back on for a true view of how it will look live? Hmm. Let me see, let me see if I can turn Okay, so it says this is specifically for offline local development sites. If you have an online staging site, you'll want to follow the staging sites guide. Um, so it doesn't actually say if I can turn it back on. Um, I think I might just have to update the site on the server to do that. Um, it looks like if my staging site was um, online, like with my host, then they have a, a different guide for that. All right, so now to get into the redesign. <clears throat> so for the redesign, the first thing I want to do is change themes. So at the moment we're using 2022 and I am going to use, oops, 
I'm going to add a new theme. So click add new and then search for 2023. Oh, here we go. Um, so I'm going to activate. And that's it, it's, act it's activated. So let's refresh this. And um, yeah, that's, that's what the site looks like. So now what I want to do is I want to turn this back into this, but in the 2023 theme. So um, there's one setting I want to check before we start, um, not general, we want to look at, I think, reading. So my homepage displays a static page. Um, so at the moment I'm looking at settings reading and there's a setting here um, where you can show your latest posts on your homepage or show a static page instead. And when I look at my, this is, this is the live site, I actually show my recent posts on the front page here. I have a blog page. Um, but now with the query loop blog, I'm actually, I'm going to turn it this way. So I'm going to set it. So my front page, home page shows my latest posts and I will create a separate blog page um, for that. So blog, so home page displays my latest posts. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I've done a couple of template editing um, in full site editing. And I feel that keeping it to this setting makes things a bit simpler. Um, so what we'll do is we'll come to WordPress uh, Appearance Editor. Um, and oh, this looks this looks new. Um, hmm. Right, so at the moment, my homepage is showing recent posts, templates. Huh. Um, oh, do you, is this, do I have Gutenberg installed? Is that why I'm seeing this new editor here, plugins? Gutenberg, ah. Um, let me temporarily turn that off because that just took me by surprise. I wasn't used to seeing that new editor. So what you saw right now, that is going to be, that is going to be included in future versions of WordPress. So that's coming soon, um, but I am okay just working with the current version of WordPress. Let me come back to editor. There we go. Okay, this is what I'm used to. Um, so on the templates, um, we have a few templates here. So home displays posts of the homepage. Um, yeah, Mark Andrews says March 21st, 6.2 should be released. Oh, so that's in like three weeks or two weeks almost. Um, so home display posts on the homepage. Um, so that's what we want to edit. We want to edit the homepage template so that it looks like this. Um, and what I've done is I have a custom header here um, for the homepage with a menu. But then um, if you look at my other pages, you can see I have a separate header for the other pages. Um, so this is my live site. I have a different header for the homepage and for other pages. So coming back to my local site, what I want to start by is creating some template parts. So the header is going to be what people normally see on my pages, this one. And then I'm going to make a new header called the home header. And that's going to be used just on the home page. All right. So we have that. So I want to make the home header look like that. 
Um, so let's see, I believe I have a cover block. Select media from the media library and all my photos are here. So here we go. Select that. And then B sounds blog. So that at the moment, this we have a paragraph blog, but I actually want to add insert before. I want to add the title block, site title. All right, because the site title actually already says B Sun's blog. And for SEO purposes too, um, by adding the site title block, that becomes an H1 header and is great. So this is going to be the home header. So I don't need that to link to the home page. Um, Let's see, and then we need to edit this so it's in the center. The text is white. We want to make this large. Seven, three, no, nope. five, no, nope. eight. Okay, that's that's looking good. Um, and then. Let's see, typography. The font actually looks a bit different. Font kind of, here we go. On my site, hmm. Let me see. So, font family. What do I have? Green sands. Font, enter. Hmm. Okay, that, that looks like it. B sounds blog. That's that. So I'd say the appearance is probably bold or maybe semi bold. That looks good. Um, and then next, this is my tagline. So again, we don't need that. But after the blog, we do want to add a tagline. Slight tagline. There we go. And then we'll center that, make the text white. Um, I think we made that italic. Oh, so that's probably over here again. So typography, um, appearance, we want to make that. Oh, it's not appearance. Um, typography. Is it decoration? No. Letter spacing, no. Letter case, no. Font family, no. Oh my goodness, where's, how do you make this italic? Appearance. Decoration, letter case, letter spacing. Huh. Can I not italicize this? Hmm, might have to come back to that. M says, does the color background add a color behind the text? Um, yes, yes, I believe you're talking about this one. Um, that would, so if I did this, like red, it would add a background to the text like that. Uh, but I don't actually need that, so I'll turn that off. Uh, John says, try Command I. Yeah, let me try that. Command I. Nope, that's not working. Hmm. It feels odd. Like I, I would, ex yeah, uh, no problem, John. I, I would expect it to be here. So let me come back. So if I go to the header or the site title blog, what's it called? It's called appearance. No, 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 that's not what it was. What is italic there? Ah, it's under appearance. Oh, okay, okay. I need to scroll down a bit. So click that. Come over here. Let me add appearance. Yeah, Mark Andrew, thank you. So under appearance, I was just looking at the bold here, but if you scroll down, aha, uh -huh, we have italics. Okay, so that's what I want. There we go. Regular italics. 
And then um, I probably want to make this a bit bigger as well. Let's try, oh, that's a bit too big. Let's try two. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got that. Now, to be honest, the gap there feels just a little too large. Um, so, under dimensions, hmm, that, that gap right there, that, that just feels a little too large. Um, I almost think it's a block spacing. Maybe it's margins. Let me try margins. Wait, see, that only makes margins larger. If I do that, bottom, can you make, can you set minus margins? Like minus 20? Oh, you can. Ooh, all right. Oh, oh, did that work or did it did it replace it? Minus 20? No, I put it back, it puts it back to that. Hmm. Hmm. Um, M, if you split the tagline into two lines, would that change it everywhere? There's already displayed two. Um seeming like going, oh okay. I'm trying to split it. So enter doesn't put it on a new line. Shift enter isn't working either. With the tagline block, it doesn't look like you can turn it into two lines. Hmm. Jean. Laura. Laura says, check the top padding of the tagline. Okay, so that tagline dimensions, padding, a link, top. I make that zero. Hmm. No. Okay, let me check. Let me see what Gene says. So if we turn these into a group block, so select two, turn them into a group group block, and then block spacing. Here we go. What happens when I make that zero? Did that work? It did. Okay. So what I did there was I grouped the site title and the tagline together. And then in the group block, I changed the block space into zero. So um, that looks a bit better. Now this, can I make that full width? There we go, if I make that full width, all right. That looks pretty good. So one other thing is this menu bar. Um, so I think I will want to add that to the header here as well. So under the main cover block, we'll add one more cover block and insert after cover block. And what is the color we have here? I want the exact same color. So I'm gonna inspect and let me see if I can find the color codes. Computers. Nope. Let's see if I go to ah, that show. Nope. How about that one? There we go. So RGB two eighty nine one two eight. So here we'll go to RGB. It's two. Ooh, um, that's definitely not the color I want. Let's come back here. Um, RGB. So it's two. Okay. And 89. And then one, two, eight. There we go. That's the color we wanted. Um, and then here we will add a navigations block. Um, at the moment, here we go. All right. 
So home about blog contact categories. So the menu um, already exists. So we just need to set to primary and that looks good. Um, but then we want to sort of fix this up a bit so it looks the same. Let's see. Um, typography, so let's make this a bit larger. Three, ooh, that's, that's too large. Two. Yeah, two looks a bit large as well. One, no, 1. 1.5, maybe. Let's go with 1.5. Then block spacing. Aha. Okay, that's probably what I have over here. Yeah, sort of split apart a bit. Um, typography, do we have appearance? Because I think I've got it a bit thinner. So. Let's make this um, light, All right? That looks pretty good. And then the cover block, let's see, that feels way too large. So minimum height of cover. If I set that, does that shrink it? Say if I go 200, well, yeah, that looks like it might work. 100 pixels, okay. Um, maybe if I go, that looks pretty good. Um, and then here, all right. So we want to get rid of this white gap. To do that, let me try what um, Laura or Jean actually said before. So let me group the two cover blocks. Let's see. So the first cover block, second cover block, let me group those. Ah, uh, does this work? There we go, turn that off. And then I want to change the block spacing to zero. That actually worked. Let's see, let me save all this so we don't lose what we've been working on. That looks pretty good, I think. Let me close that, this one's blog. That doesn't look too bad. Um, so we've just made the home header custom template part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to the home page template. At the moment, this is what the home page looks like. And we're going to replace this header with the new custom template part I built. So we come here. Um, go. So we'll remove the current header, remove header. And instead we will insert before and we will add a custom, there's a template part, template part, here we go. Template part, and we will choose the, this one. All right, so let me save that. Save, let me refresh this page. And that looks almost, almost good. Um, so what's happening, what, what, I'm, what I'm worried about is this white gap at the very top. So that is probably something I want to remove as well. So what is this white gap? This white gap, here we go, is padding on top of the main page. So it's not, so I'm looking at the code here, it's not actually padding on the template part, it's on the actual page. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. How could I remove that? Hmm. How much padding is there? Uh, 
Dragon Tail 28.8 pixels. Hey, Ben. Yep, hey Laura. Ben, it's Laura. Um, this is easier to say than to type it in. Uh, somebody mm -hmm. had told me about taking the the, um, the little toggle and like moving it over and then moving it back instead of using the numbers. This here? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so, and then there's that. Hmm. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Like sometimes that can glitch. Home, home header, home header, additional elements, additional classes. Hmm, maybe I should ask Google, remove gap at the top of um, WordPress page. Could it be in global settings, John? Oh, that's. Okay, so so let me let me do that. Let me look at global settings. So global settings, let's come over here. Layout is probably where it is. Um, padding top. Let me let me move that move it back. Let's see if that works. Let's let's save that. Come over here. Fresh. Oh, it did work. Thanks, John. That's exactly what we needed. Okay, so what I did right now is we saw some white gap at the top here. I went into global styles, uh, layout, and then changed the top padding to zero. Uh, if you leave it, it looks like it's on zero, um, but it actually isn't. So what I did was what Laura said before I moved it up, moved it back made sure it said zero, save, and then that removed the gap at the top. All right, I am extremely pleased with how that header looks. M, was that header section created, inserted as a div or as a header? Um, the answer is a header, M. And the reason, so I can, I can show you the code, um, inspect, and da, 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 here. Um, so it's a header with the class WP block template part. Um, and that's because I created it with a custom template part. Um, so when I made a custom template part, it asked me, is this a header, a footer, or just a general custom template part? And because I selected header, it created it as a header. I don't think that's the case with my current site. Oh, it is, or it might be. Oh, well. Um, okay, so that's that. Let me just check to see what this looks like on mobile, vSun's blog. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could work on that a bit maybe next time, but it's pretty much what my current site looks like as well. That's okay. All right, so we are at the top of the hour. Um, so basically what we did today was we imported my public site into a local environment so we can work on it. And we created a custom header template part to recreate. Uh, so, and then we changed the theme. So we changed the theme from 2022 to 2023. And then we recreated the header we see on my current site over onto this new site. To be honest, I'm very happy with the progress we made today. We shared information. We all gave each other ideas. I had to look online to find some answers. Um, we looked up a couple of plugins. Um, I thought it was very good. Um, does anybody have any final questions or comments they want to make before we close off this session? M says a group mad science experiment. That's exactly what this was. And hopefully everybody else found it enjoyable as much as I did as well. Um, so obviously we still need a part two and we may even need a part three to get through all this. Um, so um, please do sign up for part two. This is 
Um, a couple of weeks out, it will be on March 24th, um, but it'll be the same, same time as today's session. I will drop a link to part two in the Zoom chat here. Part two. Um, Gene, looking forward to part two. Mark Andrew, I loved all the input, really good. Robert, great, I can use this. Thanks. Oh, I'm so glad you could use this. Um, that's, that's, I really enjoy hearing that. Um, nice experience. Thank you. Um, M, so you just have to save the URL to the local build, or is there a way to find it? Save the URL. Hmm. The URL you see up here, this, this URL is for the local site. Is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about something else? Yes, once you close the local site, how do you find it again? Ah, okay. Um, so what it is, is local, the software local, the free software, um, this saves the site here. So what I do next time is I open local on my computer, um, and then I just click um, start site. So at the moment, I'll stop the site. So that then sort of closes the site um, in the background. And next time, I'll just click on this one, click on start site, and we can start right back from where we left off today. All right. Thank you everyone for joining and I look forward to seeing you again um, in the next online workshop. All right then. Bye. Bye then.